In this example, we will look at how to use Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law to solve a medium complexity circuit containing independent sources and resistors. The main steps involved are shown here. The first step is to label branch currents. Recall that a branch is a path which connects two nodes. In this circuit, we have an independent current source in this branch. Thus, the current in this branch has to be equal to 2 amps. We can start with labeling the remaining branch currents. For instance, the current in this branch can be labeled I1. The current in this branch can be labeled I2. The current in this branch can be labeled I3. Here is I4 and the final branch, the final remaining branch is I5. Next, we mark the voltage polarities across the resistors using the labeled branch currents. So consider this resistor first. I1 is entering this resistor at this end and leaving the resistor at this end. The end where the current enters is assumed higher potential and is marked with a plus sign and the end where the current leaves is marked lower potential and that is indicated with a minus sign. So we can repeat this process for all the remaining resistors. So the voltage polarities will be plus and minus here and plus and minus here, plus and minus and plus and minus. So in this problem setup, we note that we have five branch currents and also we will find the voltage drop across the, uh, across the independent current source and we can label this as voltage V. Thus in this case, we have six unknown variables V, I1, I2, I3, I4 and I5. Thus, we need to apply Kirchhoff voltage law and Kirchhoff current law to get at least six linear equations. This process is illustrated next. So we can identify this loop. Let's label it loop A. We can identify this loop. Let's label this loop C. And we can identify this loop and we can label it loop A. So in this circuit, we have A, B, and C, three loops. Also, we can identify three nodes. So let's label this node X, this node Y, and this node Z. Now we apply Kirchhoff voltage law to each loop. Recall that Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the algebraic sum of voltages around a closed path is zero, where we use a positive sign for the voltage drop. So let's start here um, for loop A, starting at the independent current source. So we can see that we are going from minus to plus, that is a voltage rise. So we write the first term with a minus sign, minus V. Next, we have this resistor. So going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. And we apply Ohm's law to this resistor to write the value of the voltage drop. So this is plus 20I2. And then for the 5 Ohm resistor, we get 5I4 is equal to 0. This process is repeated for the remaining loops. So let's look at loop B we can start anywhere. Let's start at the 10 ohm resistor. So going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. So we get plus 10 I3 and going from plus to minus is another voltage drop. So this is 105 I5 and now going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So we get minus 5i4 is equal to 0. Similarly for loop C, we just use the marked voltage polarities to write the KVL. So starting here, 
we have plus 28 I3 and then going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So minus 10 I3 and then going from minus to plus is another voltage rise. So minus 20 I2 is equal to 0. So this illustrates the process of applying Kirchhoff voltage law to the loops with the assumed voltage polarities. Next we need to apply Kirchhoff current law to nodes X, Y and Z. Recall that Kirchhoff current law states that the sum of currents entering a node is equal to sum of currents leaving a node. So let's look at node X. We can see 2 amp current is entering and I1 and I2 are leaving. So this gives sum of currents entering 2 is equal to sum of currents leaving which is I1 plus I2. Let's look at node Y. I2 is entering, I3 and I4 are leaving. So what we get is I2 is I3 plus I4. And then looking at node Z, I1 is entering, I3 is entering and only I5 is leaving. So I5 is equal to I1 plus I3. Thus, we have six unknowns and six equations and these can be solved with the help of a scientific calculator to get the values. We can use a scientific calculator to solve these six linear equations and this is shown here and the solution is obtained as follows. So V is equal to 35 volts and the currents are obtained as follows. Note that if we obtain a negative value for the current, then this means that in reality, this current is flowing in the opposite direction. Using the calculator, we can show that V comes out 35 volts. I1 comes out 5 over 7 amps. I2 comes out 9 over 7 amps. I3 is minus 4 over 7 amps. I4 is 13 over 7 amps. And I5 is 1 over 7 amps. Once we solve the circuit, then we can use this to find any desired powers. In this case, we are interested in the power associated with the current source. So this is given by power associated with the current source is the product of the voltage and the current. And we need to use passive sign convention to decide the sign of the power calculation. We can see that the 2 amp current is entering the terminal marked minus. Hence the power is written with a minus sign. So power is minus V times 2. And then substituting the value of V as 35 volt, we get minus 70 watt. So the final answer is negative and this is signifying that the independent current source is generating power in this circuit. We can verify the solution using LTSpice. So this is the same circuit uh, constructed in LTSpice. We can run this and then by bringing the cursor on the current source, we can read in the bottom left corner that the power dissipation is minus 70 watt. This confirms the solution.